Hello, my name is Matt Connor from Network Insight and welcome to my product demonstration on OpenShift networking. We will start this module by discussing OpenShift application deployment and how applications are exposed with the default configuration. We will then move the scaled pods to a number of five, change a label that helps categorize and then view the results. When internal applications need to be exposed to the outside world, you need to create a root. We will create a root and have a look at the different root types. This product demonstration is fully demoed. So after the demo, you will have a good understanding of how to run application deployments, scale pods, understand the default service type and expose services with both secure and insecure routes. As you can see, we have two projects, both dev and staging. When thinking about isolation in an OpenShift environment, we have the Linux kernel and the Kubernetes namespace. Then we have OpenShift projects that are like an enhanced Kubernetes namespace that allow users to store their resources. Most of this series will focus on services and routes, which are the cornerstone components to OpenShift networking. A service sits in front of a pod which runs our application. And for now, consider this to be internal to the cluster. Then we have routes that expose the service so it can be accessed external to the cluster. Let's look at this in more detail to get a better understanding how networking works in OpenShift. Let us create a new deployment that will run our containerized application. It's really simple to run new deployments in OpenShift. And we do this with the OC new app command. I'm using an image from Bitnami and we can call this OpenShift app. So in the background, a number of resources have been created for us. As you can see, the deployment is successfully created. A service is automatic created for us. And notice that the application has not been exposed to the outside world yet. By default, applications get an internal service, which means they are accessible within the cluster only. Before we examine how to expose applications externally, along with the service details, let us quickly look at the deployment, and in our case is only one pod, which represents the application. This pod is in running state. It's been assigned a pod IP address from a pool, and has been placed on this specific node. So you may be thinking that this pod is an IP address. It looks like it's from an internal range and our current application requirement is for internal use only. So why can't we access the pod which represents our application from the pod IP address? Pods will come and go all the time. They are ephemeral and this is not a mistake. It's how they are designed. So you don't want to access the application by the pod IP address. You want to access the application with the service IP address, which sits in front of the pod or groups of pods. So I have mentioned service a few times now. So let's examine the service that was automatically created when we issued the new app command, which started the deployment. This service has been given a name. It's in a namespace, which is the project I'm working in. It has also been assigned a label. Everything in OpenShift gets assigned a label. So when you have to troubleshoot OpenShift, essentially you'll be troubleshooting labels and we'll address this very soon. We have a service type of cluster IP. Services can be of different types and the default service type is cluster IP. And what do you think this means to application access? And what access does this service type give the application? So we discussed this just a few moments ago, and it means that the service that represents a pod or a group of pods are only accessible within the cluster. We have a number of target ports that this application is listening on. Notice we have two ports. An important point to note at this stage is that a single service can represent a number of different ports. 
the application we have is pretty small and we only have one endpoint. So just in summary before we move to the next stage, the important point to note is that the service type of cluster IP is internal to the cluster and we only have one endpoint or pod that the service sits in front of. We have a pretty small application deployment here. Now we want to scale this application or pods so we can better handle spikes of traffic. We do this by using a replica set. A replica set ensures that a specified number of pod replicas are running at a given time. So let me scale this deployment to a replica of 5. Now that I've scaled our deployment to replica of 5, let us check the service again with the OC the scribe command. Everything is more or less the same, the name and more importantly the label and selectors and also the target ports are the same. But now you can see we have five endpoints and not just one. So we have a single service that acts like a VIP and sits in front of all of these pods that are accepting connections while the pods that represent their applications are listening on certain ports which are listed as target ports. What I really want to point to you is the power of labels in OpenShift. You can actually place pods on different nodes based on labels. This could be for security or performance reasons. But for now, let us look at what happens when we start to change the label. So before we move to the next stage, in summary, we have a single service that sits in front of not just one pod, but a group of pods and the label has been assigned to help us group and categorize all of this. Let us navigate back to the web console. We go down to workloads and we can select pods. As you can see, we have five pods running and we did this by scaling the replica set to five. So I'm going to do something you should never do in production. Let's go to the first pod and we're going to remove the label. Now, as you can see, I've removed the label from the first pod, but we still have five replicas running. Let's try this again. You can see it automatically scales the replicas back to five. If you want, you can do this all day and the results will be the same. This is the power of OpenShift and zero downtime. So the pods will come and go and that's how they work by design. They are ephemeral and immutable, which is why you don't access the application that is running in the pods, listen to target ports by the pod IP address. So let me quickly test something else. Instead of going to the pod and changing the label, let's go to the service and edit the label there. So how do you think this is gonna affect the endpoints that the service sits in front of. Notice now we have no endpoints that this service reference and the selector has been changed to app 213. So our application can't be accessed right now. So let me quickly change this back. So I'm gonna quickly change this back so our application can be back up and running. So we've had a look at pods and replica sets and we touched on services and the internal service type of cluster IP. So now your requirement has changed and you want to expose your application to the outside world. And we can't do this just with a service type of cluster IP by itself. We need to have a root. A root is URL based and it sits in front of a service. So we have a user request that goes to the root which goes to the service, and this goes to the backend pods. We can have both insecure and secure routes, and we will look at both. Let us quickly start with insecure routes. We'll also start from scratch a new deployment with the OC new app command. So we have exposed a service, and we have created a route. A route is URL based, and allows external access to the application. 
So this route represents this service on this port, but I'd like to get a bit more information, so I'll issue the describe command. The weight is a useful parameter here if you want to suppress requests to the back end. A value of zero suppresses requests to this back end. So we have created an insecure route as opposed to a secure route where we can set the TLS termination. As you can see, the TLS termination has been set to none. So we can have different types of secure routes and we create secure routes with the OC create command and not the OC expose command. So let us go into the help feature, which can give us a bit more information of the types of secure routes. So we have three options. We can have TLS re-encryption, TLS pass-through, and split traffic for blue-green deployments. So if you have an edge route, you must configure the TLS certificate in the route. If you're using pass-through, you must make sure the pods are aware of the certificate. With pass-through, the route does not care about the TLS search or keys. Let us quickly create a new deployment and then a secure route to expose the application to the external world. So in the background, I've already created my certificates and keys, and now I'm ready to create a secure route with the OC create command. So with this command, we are creating an edge route with a custom certificate. So we're providing a certificate key pair in PEM encoded files, and also a separate CA certificate in a PEM encoded file. This will complete the certificate chain. So when we do a describe on the route, we can see we have some additional details on the TLS termination. We have set this secure route to be an edge route, which is one of the most popular secure route types. We started this module by discussing OpenShift application deployment and how applications are exposed with the default configuration. We then moved the scale pods to a number of five and changed the label and viewed the results. When internal applications need to be exposed to the outside world, you need to create a route and we discussed the different route types. This product demonstration was fully demoed, so you should have a good understanding of how to run OpenShift deployments, scale pods, understand the default service type, and expose services with both secure and insecure routes.